Yeah. Okay, welcome back to End of the Double Dragon Podcast. This is episode 113. Bringing you a little bit different here with the recording. Hopefully this makes it to YouTube. I don't know, it's the first time doing it. But with me, oh, it's me, your boy, Shane Greenwood here at Double Dragon Gym. Shh, I'm not really here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm here with Trenton Lawrence. Hello. And Hugh O'Donnell. Hey. How are you today, fellas? Good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that was a lie. Yeah. <laughs> These two don't know what to do with themselves. <laughs> There's no martial arts. No. <laughs> but from here, let's just get straight into it. So we have a guest online. No one, so let me just do the drum roll. We got, he is the owner of Boxing Works Gym in California. Um, he's also head national coach of USMF. Uh, um, he recently... Uh, <clears throat> Had a had a champion in uh, in one for, uh, Adam Wake kickboxing for Janet Todd, and it is online with us at the moment, Mr. Brian Popejoy. How are you? How are you doing? Good man, going really good. <laughs> hey, I, I want to ask just a quick question here that I just thought up before. Um, were you at the 2018 IFMAS in Mexico as a coach? Uh, yes. Oh, cool. Uh, that means that, like, my business partner Rowan, he was also on the he was on the Australian team. So one, right. one of your guys, Oscar, Oscar Cach, Cach, Castro, um, for one yes, of our yes. boys, yeah, Luke Thompson in the finals, in the silver right. and gold medal match. <laughs> and small world, huh? That's it. Is. Oh, it was a good fight though as well. It was a really oh, very fight. much so. Yeah. And like you know, yeah, Luke. Um, Luke's did he, did he, <laughs> Luke's knee explode at the end of the fight. <laughs> that was yeah, crazy. I remember that. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. that was too bad. Yeah, ah, he recovered all right. He's he's getting right. around now, you know. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, yeah, there is a very small world. Very small world. Good, excellent. So let, let's go into here, Brian. First off, is like let's get a little bit on your background, like everyone that we do on the podcast. First off the bat, so how did you get into martial arts? What was your first experiences? Uh, my very first experience, um, I, I was walking home from school, uh, uh first day of, uh, calling her high school and got jumped by a couple of kids and roughed up a little bit. Uh, so my mom was like, that's enrolling in some martial arts classes. So first thing was, uh, uh, Taekwondo at about age 12 or so. And that just kind of, uh, after that, it just was, the floodgates were open. I, I couldn't get enough of anything and everything so it was you know checking out all the books from the library buying all the magazines but uh uh, i was uh getting beat up after school when i was 12 years old that kind of got me on this path so (laughs) it's like it's it's like the stereotypical martial arts story isn't it (laughs) very much so very much uh nothing nothing unique and cool it's it's just very uh very stereotyped and typical so yeah but it's very relatable to everyone that pretty much listens to our podcast really Yeah. <laughs> so, um, when was your first experiences getting into fighting, and like, you know, how long did that carry through before you took like more of a, a coaching role? Let's see. I trained high school. You know, had my little rebellious phase and stuff, so I stopped training. I was just a little skateboard punk rock kid for a while. Once uh, once high school ended, I just felt the need to get back into it. Uh, looked up my old, um, just kind of jumping around a little bit, but um, I mean, let me see. I'm sorry, I'm back checking here. Uh, <laughs> when I talked about getting into the different, uh, you know, getting into anything and everything, anything I could find out about martial arts, um, I saw a little flyer at a like a community center or a grocery store or something for a guy that was doing something he called Kali kickboxing. Um, had to go investigate that. Uh, it was my first ever, uh, I would say, yeah, a Muay Thai coach. His name was Dave Rogers. He was uh, doing sort of the you know Jeet Kune Do concepts thing. This would have been like around 84, 85. Um, so after Taekwondo, I started training with him. Um, got out of training for a few years. After high school, looked him back up. Um, trained for a couple of years. He was... Really, at the time, not so interested in uh, doing anything in, anything competitively. It was uh, purely non-commercial gym. It was in his garage. We could only work out for uh, so many months out of the year. We were in uh, uh, Illinois, you know, Chicago area, basically a little bit, a little bit south of Chicago. Um, 
so it gets cold there come November. So we've got about four months of, uh, you know, desolate, uh, ice and snow and this, and this sort of thing. So, uh, um, limited the amount of training we could do, but anyway, I'm getting off on a tangent here. Um, <laughs> after a couple of years, I kind of decided I wanted to try to take some of this stuff and, and, and test it. Um, at the time, Dave was more just doing things for, you know, for self-improvement. Uh, like I said, it was really more of a, a, a Jeet Kune Do, you know, concept sort of guy. We did some Muay Thai, and then the class after that, we'd split up into like doing uh, trap, you know, trapping, Wing Chun and whatnot, and then ended with Kali. Um, I feel bad because I think I kind of influenced him and really pushed him just you know, into Muay Thai. I was the student that was there all the time. And, no, you pushed them uh, into the light, mate. It's okay. Pushed, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, pushed, yeah, pushed them into the light. And then, uh, you know, so, so we found another local gym in town that it, uh, it, it was mostly a full, you know, full contact above the rule of the, above the waist rules. Um, but the owner wanted to start throwing, which would, I guess basically be considered you know, like smoker fights or, you know, unsanctioned, unlicensed sort of thing. So he had a few of those at his gym. Um, he managed to find some people that were willing to either fight, uh, you know, leg kick fights or, uh, I can't say full rules, but, um, very irresponsible rules for, uh, uh, for the level of, <laughs> for the level of skill of the people in that area at that, at that time. Uh, this would have been like around, 91, 92, something like that. So that was my first inkling into getting into into fighting. What was the second part of the question? Because, man, I talked way too much there. I, I, I... <laughs> well, it's just going into <clears throat> into like um, into your career, like, you know, <clears throat> some of your fight experiences, and then kind of transitioning to a coach role. Okay. Um, to be honest, like the, the way the, the fight career ran um, – it's always that proverbial, if I knew then, you know, what I knew now, I, I wouldn't have done things like that. I would have fought a lot more. Um, beginning to end, only had about, I think it was about 19, I don't think it was a full 20 fights. And that's from, like, first ever smoker, you know, smoker fights up to um, uh, the last, like, you know, professional fights. So it was a really, not a lot of fights spread out over a long period of time. Um, like I said, maybe 92 was, uh, the first fight and last fight was like 2001. So like I said, only about 20 fights spread out over about 10 years, which is not really, in my opinion now, like the way to go about doing things, but you know. But that, back then, like, you know, the opportunities probably weren't so much. So same thing, like only like in like kickboxing Muay Thai, I only had like five fights and I had a few MMA fights and that. It's just, there wasn't as many opportunities just like. These guys now they get like what we do development days, which is be similar to smoke as you for you. Yeah. Um, they get to do a bunch of those. They get to do the if moves. They get to and then yeah. do the pros. So like it, it's just it was just a different time frame. Yeah, yeah, I can see that. Uh, for me, um, you know, the first fights were back in my home state, Illinois. Uh, then I, you know, moved to California, had fights out here, and I took some pretty decent sized jumps in terms of the fights. I had like two smokers out here and then, uh, got on a card, um, you know, an actual promotion. Then I talked to that promoter at the time in California, the, uh, they only had, they had low kick fights, no clinch, no knees. <laughs> Elbows were completely out of the question for an amateur. It's dangerous. So this was, it's dangerous. You know, what's that? Yeah, it's dangerous, dangerous. <laughs> so, and the, um, but the, the only way to get like uh, fights with a clinch or fights with knees for some odd reason was to take like a five round fight, like a title fight. So you could have all these three rounders, but it would just be more or less uh, low kick rules. But uh, to get as close to Muay Thai, um, you know, it had to be like a five round title fight. So I quickly told the promoter I was willing and wanting to do that. And, uh, um, after that happened, it completely shut out the opportunity to do, um, like to do the engine fights, do the smoker fights and such, uh, you know, whereas a lot of people had, you know, would do smokers every weekend, you know, sometimes they'd have them on Saturday, uh, Saturday night, someplace they'd have them Sunday afternoon, that sort of thing. Um, once I kind of jumped into that, they 
that avenue was shut off for me. So that also kind of slowed down the uh, ability to get, uh, you know, to get more experience. But again, in retrospect, I would have done it a little differently, you know, <laughs> would have took advantage of those opportunities um, beforehand. But, you know, such as life turned out okay. So Yeah, it's still fine. So, yeah, it's <clears throat> so when did you uh, tr- uh, decide to transition to more so uh, be more of a coach? Well, it's it was an interesting sort of um, time frame. Uh, I ended up getting a gym <laughs> uh, well before uh, you know we bought Boxing Works um, from the previous owners uh, back in '97. Um, at that time, I'd only had about three fights, so it's like I really, in terms of you know, running the gym, like we didn't buy the place with the intent of turning it into a fight gym. It was really, it was kind of at the height of like cardio kickboxing and Taibo and all, all that sort of thing. So that was really what it was. It was a way for us to, um, how do you want to call it? Uh, bah, 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 bah. have a, you know, it was more of a fitness facility. And then in the off hours, we, you know, we'd, uh, you know, we do, you know, we do Muay Thai training or we had like a boxing coach that, uh, used to have a, a stable of athletes that would compete at the you know, great Western forum in Inglewood, which was where the Lakers and Kings used to play back in the day and whatnot. They used to have these, uh, I can't remember what night it was on, but they used to have these, uh, pretty good sized you know, fight nights at the forum and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, so there's a little bit of an overlap, had the gym, um, used the gym as a means to, you know, support ourselves, support the family. And then, uh, was fighting intermittently at the same time. Um, I remember, like, uh, it was about 2001 when uh, I had my last fight, and it was just, it really took a while to get into um, coaching other fighters, because uh, at the sort of the end of the career, when I kind of just, let me see. Getting off on a tangent here. Uh, <laughs> I, I just remember, like, uh, remember the last fight. Like I'd reached a point before that where it was like you get, you know, you'd get the butterflies, that sort of thing, that nervousness. But it wasn't like in anything out of the ordinary. It was just part of the process. And I just remember that last fight, like uh, being in the locker room and just having this terrible sense of dread, like absolutely not wanting to go out there. And, and it was just a I had never experienced that, even from you know, for the very first time. You know, be scared, um, like I said, feel the butterflies. But this this felt really different. Um, so I went out, uh, had a nice nice hard fight, won, but just didn't want to do it after that. I just didn't 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 feel the same need. Um, but the transition from going from there from fighting to actually coaching took a little while. It probably took about a year or more, um, just because once the like I identified myself as a, as an athlete, you know, as a fighter. Mm. And once I didn't have that anymore, I didn't want to do that. I didn't know exactly, you know, I was lost a little bit, if you will. You know, I didn't know what I wanted to do with myself, even though we had the gym. It's like, I never thought of it as uh, anything more than, you know, how it existed for its, you know, more of its fitness clientele. Mm-hmm. If that makes any sense, you know, yeah. again, looking back, you know, it's like, not this tar- sharpest uh, tool in the shed. It's like I've got this thing right in front of me this whole time, but couldn't quite figure out, or didn't want to quite make that transition into into helping uh, you know other people out that wanted to fight. But say so it was a, probably a good solid year of you know wandering around, figuring myself out, and, you know, being a head case, if you will. <laughs> <laughs> Just getting torn getting between all, two worlds. All, yeah. You know, getting all emo and sensitive and couldn't get over myself, you know. <laughs> uh, that's all good. Good. Uh, so let me hand it over to Hugh because I know he's dying. He's <laughs> absolutely dying to talk to you. But like, um, he's also a very uh, a golden era buff as well. As you, as uh, you are as well. <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll get stuck in. Yeah, but like, yeah, yeah you, you want to ask a few things? So I wanted to just like keep painting the picture, I guess, of when you were starting fighting and coaching as well. So we, you talked a little bit about that move from kind of the smokers to the promotions and, and screwing around with the rules and stuff like that. I wanted to get an idea of like, so when you were, or we'll start with when you were fighting. Like what right. did the kind of scene look like it was a little bit more kickboxing driven it was like were the like were there kind of like 
people in the scene that were like, you know, you knew they were the top guys. It was kind of just this sort of like wash of like there'd just be shows sometimes. Like, like did, was there kind of like a league at the time or, or was it sort of just kind of all over the place? Uh, it's late, like late nineties, early two thousands in California was actually a really, um, you know, for, for our level, for our level at the States, which, you know, I've always kind of felt has been, um, behind the rest of the world. Yeah. Uh, but you know, for what we had going on in, in California, especially Southern California at the time, there was, it was a pretty decent scene. Um, we'd have shows. Uh, like a promoter that I fought for, his name was Voit Kamnark. Um, he had shows about every six weeks, maybe every eight weeks sometimes. Um, but that was, you know, pretty consistent. Uh, and then the guy, you know, the, the other big promoter in the area was uh, a guy called Dennis Warner, who's still out there doing shows to this day. It's uh, WCK is the name of his promotion. Same thing. He was having shows monthly or maybe every six weeks or so. So there was a lot of opportunities. Those two were, I would say, the biggest, uh, the biggest most frequently occurring events for us. Um, and then sprinkled in with a couple other promoters that were doing things, you know, not quite as frequently, but we had a pretty decent scene. Um, in terms of, uh, the rule structures and such. Yeah. For a while it was really weird. Like I said, you know, it'd have to be mostly kickboxing. Mm. It would have to be like a title fight to just, you know, to do clinch and knees. Um, it's a really strange time that honestly hasn't, uh, a, a lot of the judges, for example, a lot of the judges and refs were sort of holdovers from um, even older times, sort of the uh, the birth of kickboxing yeah. in the States, you know, the, a lot of the long pants type rules and such. So, um, you know, it was real interesting. And I say interesting, I guess it was, I guess shitty would be a better, <laughs> a better, better, better way to describe it. Uh, you know, for people that really tried to do, um, like if you couldn't, if, if you couldn't up, apply like a real sort of, uh, you know, tie style and just completely dominate and uh, take away someone else's game that, you know, it, it would almost always, you know, favor the person that would say be more on the front foot or more of the puncher or, mm-hmm. or that sort of thing. So, uh, you know, it was, there was good and bad to it. Like I said, a, a lot of, a lot of, a, a lot more opportunity uh, than exists now for a lot of these kids in some regards. Um, but the, the judging, I guess that's always been sort of the, the thing. It still happens to this day. Yeah. Judging was sometimes uh, you know, suspect, I guess you'd say. Yeah. <laughs> I always find it interesting to ask people from uh, other countries, like sort of what their scenes like, because in Australia, I think uh, from the outside, like when I go to Thailand and stuff and I talk to like, especially people from the U S they really think of Australia as like one of the Muay Thai countries. Like they're like, you got Australia, you got France, but actually our scene here is like quite similar to the US's in that through the 80s and 90s, um, I've been told, kickbox- <laughs> <laughs> kickboxing was, um, oh, kickboxing was really big, but yeah, like we were doing above the waist stuff. Like even, um, uh, you know, our gym had some really big name kickboxers back in those days, but like, yeah, they were kicking above the waist and, and you had to throw eight kicks around or something like that. And there is like a lot of like, like I've talked too much on this show about how like we've just got this split issue, especially where we are in New South Wales, where we've got like, um, you know, the WMC affiliated sanction, Muay Thai Australia, that's doing everything right. The judges are good. We're really lucky to have some good actual Thai officials like Tsing Pai Ak. Um, But then you've got these other sanctions that are carried over from, those kickboxing days and they just have absolutely no idea how to score tie boxing like but it, it's just a matter of like everyone in like this the scene here is in it, it's very like the participation is really good like people want to fight muay thai um but these guys have just really gone okay we know how to judge kickboxing um it's the same thing and they're accommodating yeah. <laughs> they're accommodating <laughs> any rules as well like we um like again, I can't get into it again. I just I like every episode. Every episode. <laughs> like you know, they're allowing. Like we have just this. Like the the kind of surge in participation has meant like obviously people come out of the works to profit from it. 
So like you've got people like, all right, this one's going to be for the Australian Muay Thai Without Elbows Championship. It's like, but yeah. why? <laughs> <laughs> so it's interesting to see, like, I actually think, uh, a str- oh, I mean, like, it depends who you're talking to, like the, you know, the, the good sanctions, things are moving really well. But yeah, like our scene, I think is actually a lot more like the state scene than people realize. But at the same time, Australia is a big place. So like, you know, you got like up in Queensland where, um, you know, John Wayne Parr is. That's always been like a very uh, Muay Thai, Muay Thai spot. And the same with Western Australia. Um, but like so we're saying, like, I think, because um, I'll get into this, uh, Australia is probably just luckier than um, the States in that we're so close to Thailand. So like, yeah. there's always just been that kind of littering of um, actual you know, elite level time knowledge getting to through. And that's when like a lot of the gyms have that like affiliations with place back in Thailand, which is probably what the U S took a little bit longer to get. Cause what I was going to ask was like, you said you kind of gravitated towards the actual Muay Thai and had to fight those five round fights to get the clinch and knee at that time. Cause I know now you've uh, seen hours and hours of, God in here tape. But at that time, were you watching Muay Thai or it was just the training in Muay Thai rules? Just that was what you gravitated towards. Oh, I was watching it like like uh, crazy. It was yeah. uh, part of it. I mean, it was like a if I could get up to Hollywood. Like uh, Hollywood um, has a very very large Thai community, um, and at the time. You know what we'd have to do is we, you know, I'd convince the wife who, you know, who's Thai. Hey, we got to go up to, you know, we got to go up and mm-hmm. go to the restaurants and, and this and that and the other <laughs> thing um, because they have all the the videotape stores. Uh, so it was a, you know, it was a pilgrimage to go up there uh, and rent uh, rent a armload of videotapes and and bring them all back and and watch and study and geek out and um, you know and, and try to draw some of. Uh, you know, what I've seen into, you know, on video into, you know, into what I was doing. So, um, there's like, yeah, there's, there's probably a lot, a lot of our users, uh, listeners here just goes video. What's video? Like, you just go YouTube, that, man. I know, I know. Just goes, <laughs> but this is, yeah. Think about back in the day. I, it's like, yeah, I, it's good to grab a whole thing, a duffel bag full of tapes. Like same thing when, when first watching the UFC, like, you know, it's like, you have to yeah. go back into the, the dirty part of this this video is going. Oh, I'm gonna get this and <laughs> put it put on if you show it. <laughs> yeah, it's it was it was funny. I mean, I wouldn't. Uh, I mean, you know, before that, like it, it was, you know, when I was living in Illinois, again, it was a small town. I'd have to, you know, call up uh, places out on the West Coast, or, or there was a guy I knew in Texas that you know I'd send him twenty five bucks, and you know, a month later he'd send me back a you know, stack of videotapes that he had recorded and such. And for the longest time, that was, you know, that was uh, how you kind of see how things are supposed to look. Yeah. You know, for, yeah, for, for me, that was a big thing because, um, you know, a certain amount of like having to emulate this thing, maybe not always understanding what I was seeing, but more like kind of a monkey see, monkey do kind of, uh, kind kind of thing, and, mm. and but but it was critical. I think it was it was really important. And uh, you know, getting to my proverbial old man, you know, how these kids these days don't understand how easy they have it. But, <laughs> but but that's good. That's good because you know it allows people to see things on a very high level and have you know really something to sort of look at and strive for, and, and again try to emulate. Like you know what good Muay Thai is supposed yeah. to look like. Where back then. You know, you could be fed anything and not really, you know, know for certain, so. Yeah, it's kind of amazing, like, yeah, like I said, like how easy people have it coming up now. They can just fire up YouTube. Like, even you can go back to, like, yeah, you can watch Golden Age. I think you probably uploaded a lot of stuff you find in the searches. <laughs> um, but, like, the interesting thing is, like, you, you think, because you hear a lot of stories from, you know, people in past generations, yeah, like you said, digging up videotapes and stuff like that. Now any of these young guys can um, just fire up YouTube and watch anything, but it's amazing how many of them don't. Like I find myself all the time when we've got guys. Um, I boss people around up here a little bit. Uh, I try my best. Yep. But um, 
one of the main things I find, like I'm always like when I'm teaching classes and things like that, I'm just telling people, look up this on YouTube because I can explain it to you in words and I can show you as best I can. But if you want to see it done spectacularly, just watch yeah. and watch. And like, I guess it's probably, I think, getting, because I'm always pushing people towards watching like uh, the Golden Era stuff because I think that's just where the, I just think the representation is, but not even just Golden Era as well, like stuff that's gone on in the elite stadiums in the last few years too. Yeah. But I think maybe just that little bit of lack of accessibility, like that you really have to watch and study, like you don't have, it presented in this format where you've got a commentator basically telling you what's going unless you speak time, <laughs> um, <laughs> where you've got like, yeah, this detailed commentary, but also it's like, you look at how people study kind of the MMA side of things, like people that are in that world, there is so, such like a popularity in these podcasts that don't just talk about a podcast, YouTube channels that just, just extra media that, that, um, they're not just talking about, there's definitely a lot of media in that sport that just talks about like the, the soap opera of it, but people are really interested in like the finer technical details. So I guess they can sort of have it spoon fed to them that little bit. And like people are working, so like people are doing a lot of good work in that sport, like coming out with weekly, even sometimes more than weekly shows and yeah. detail things. Whereas like when I'm telling someone to go, I think sometimes when I tell someone to go and look up, um, you know, this fighter to watch this style. And there's that little bit of like, you actually have to sit there and pay your full attention to it and come up with your own ideas about it. And I think that's why people are sort of not really watching it because like, it's even still the same thing. I get it. Like the biggest thing that I'm trying to steer people away from is when I get people to start watching tape, I'll be like, all right, who have you watched for this? And they're coming out with just like kind of glory fights, K1 fights. So they've been watching this. And I'm like, Look, there's probably stuff you can take from that, fine, but that's not what you're training to compete in. Like, you can't, it's like, like, you're really just giving yourself this limited picture, but it's like, it's packaged in that accessible way. So people are just going to gravitate towards it. And that's probably, maybe it's the same in the States. The issue that we have in Australia is when people are coming up, is it takes them time to realize that what they're doing is Muay Thai. Like, I see a lot of, especially the amateur fights out here where, like, I'm looking at it like, this is just, this is a kickboxing match. It's like the rules will allow for a Muay Thai fight, but you guys are just kickboxing. And then you see, like, it takes guys that little bit more. They, they, it's, it's only the guys that move up in experience bracket a lot of the time that are actually starting to make it look like Muay Thai. And that's kind of what we're moving back towards. Maybe it's similar in the US as we're getting guys, like, really trying to put the effort into training guys. So it looks like Muay Thai from day one, basically. Because it's like, that's where people are hitting their growing pains, I think, in Australia when they get to that higher level. Where it's like, they're really, they're kind of having an exposure, sort of, yeah, what they were doing. Where's kickboxing? No, I'm sorry, I cut you off. No, no, here you go. No, I was going to say, I, I when you, you talked about that, you know, people have success at a certain level. Yeah. Or, or not looking necessarily, you know, Thai boxing and Muay Thai uh, until they reach a, a certain point. And I, I would say that's pretty much par for the course here uh, as well. You'll see people that, you know, can do well with a particular style that might not, you know, stylistically be, uh, you know, very much, you know, in, in that Muay Thai sort of aesthetic. And they kill people up to a certain point, but then when they reach that next point, it's like not so much, not so much anymore. And I've, I've found it interesting because I've had people that, um, you know, that struggle at that earlier phase of, of their fights, of their of their training, because you, you have someone that comes out in a, <laughs> you know, in a caveman sort of fashion, and and and, and you know, and that can give that can give people trouble. That really yeah. can, um, you know, especially when you're new and inexperienced and so much emotions going on and, and unsure of everything. And yeah, I, 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 it's, it's almost like a universal thing. It seems like, you know, yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I see a lot of it here. I, I think as well as like some of the hardest, like when I get uh, a young fighter that comes to and he, he or she is the very aggressive, strong, hand, it's a lot, a lot of times they come out hands first and, and they yeah. blow through someone. 
it's really hard to communicate to them that I'm like, you know, like I understand that, you know, you just had a very dominant fight, but I still need to tell you why. Uh, you need to understand these different little details because that runs out. That runs out at the five fight mark, right? And people exactly. get that exactly. kind of confidence that like, yes, look, yeah, I can just blow through people if I just so I'm forward. And like, even sometimes you'll watch like the guys who come out like that at the start of their careers, like they fizzle out the earliest. And even it's kind of like some of the people that are getting given trouble by that style, once they get to kind of eight, nine, ten fights, you see like their style was just kind of developing. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Yeah, it seems like the 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 uh, the, the ceiling for you know just that pure you know caveman aggression, like the ceiling for that seems to be really kind of low. You know, for a lot obviously there's exceptions with with anything, but um, yeah, I see a lot. Of, I was actually having a discussion with um, one of uh, one of my younger athletes, his his father. We we were talking about you know. Not in a bad way, but we're talking about how there's you know a certain gym that all of them are very aggressive and at a certain level of competition here that they do quite well, but they don't have anybody that's the next thing and the next thing and the next thing. So mm -hmm. it's, it's a worldwide uh, universal uh, <laughs> a universal thing, you know. Well, I guess it's like um, it's the layers and levels that you know it's yeah. gonna take you to the top from there. Like when you coach someone or like your, your coaching principles in general from there do you do like um very drill based like in that initial stage from there or like you know do you kind of take each athlete and just like you know you have to take them through a bit more to kind of like shore up some holes in their game or like how, how do you just get like your general principles um things have definitely changed over time um you know for certain the old way like the, the way i went about doing things was um probably, I guess you'd call it my best impersonation of, you know, how I learned it in Thailand, you know, we, you know, it was like five rounds on the pads, you know, five rounds in the bag, clinch for 45 minutes, something, or 30 minutes, or what have you, uh, something kind of in that basic uh, sort of frame, that was like the prescription for everybody all the time, and, and so on and so forth. Over the years, um, it's changed quite a bit, I'm doing a lot more a lot more drills, a lot more partner, uh, a lot more partner type work than, than we used to. It used to be, it was either, you know, you were either on the pads or you were sparring. There wasn't much, you know, much else done in any other capacity. Um, but I kind of felt like that developmentally it, you, you know, you either, it was kind of sink or swim kind of thing, mm. you know? But that again, that would be that would be my fault for not uh, conveying those necessary things for, for people to be able to to grow. But it, it was just like, like I said, it was almost just like an impersonate how you you know train in a in, in a Thai camp. Uh, you know, it's just you know you, you know how it goes. It's like wake up, run, you know, come back, shadow box, shadow, shadow, and then uh, you know hit the pads or hit the bag or whatever. And then like the 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 amount of instruction. Uh, you know, instruction was different, I guess you'd say. It was just something that would happen over a long period of time. Or, you know, if there's a language barrier, you know, obviously that interferes with instruction, you know. Um, but uh, over time, it, I've changed things a lot. I mean, we still, you know, there's still pad work and kick in the bag and, 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 and such. But I, I do a lot more, a lot more partner-based stuff now. Um a lot more time. It's going to sound funny. Just, just kind of, kind of working in the air, if you will, just mm -hmm. drilling things out. Um, in a, you know, I guess in a shadow boxing sort of context, uh, to, to, you know, for lack of a better term, I'm, you know. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I, I definitely changed uh, the way I go about doing things over over time. Hmm. Well, I guess with that kind of older style, uh, like with the more traditional Thai training, it, it kind of lends to the person that's doing the training to figure it out, what you're kind of doing wrong. Like, you know, <clears throat> when they're kind of left to the bag, you do bag or you do shadow and you kind of, like, you, you, always, you always kind of gravitate to what you know, but you, you got to really be introspective a bit more if you want to grow without that kind of like real hands-on instruction that, you know, okay, I don't think I'm doing this right. 
or it's not coming out the way it should. So I've got to, I don't know, I've got to keep myself accountable and yeah. fix it up. I, I, I think there's a definite, like a definite plus to that. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, you know, uh, kind of with the situation that, you know, the athletes that I have, it's like they, they don't have, you know, two, you know, two hour plus sessions a day. And, uh, you know, they've got lives and careers and, and families and things like that. So it's like, I've got to come up with a way that, you know, sometimes can be a little more concise. It's like, they don't, you know, they don't have that, that sort of time. And, and culturally, I feel that, you know, it's, it's maybe a little, well, it's, it's very different, of course. Um, but yeah, that, that level of introspection or that level of, uh, that length of time to kind of figure things out, if you will, you know, these guys don't have, you know, they're starting later in life. They, they, you know, they're not going to get, you know, 150 fights to figure it out, you know, to figure out certain things. And, uh, uh, you know, so it just, it changes up. I, I, I feel the way we, you know, the way that I go about doing things. And it's, um, again, there's no, to me, there's no right way or wrong way. It's just, you know, you, can't argue with success but I, I feel like just because of the situation these people are in my people are in the people you know maybe more in western countries or what have you uh, everywhere but thailand um you know it, it's like the learning curve is different mm-hmm. has to be done a little differently i think yeah yeah, uh, yeah it's, it's pretty similar to what we do here and and it's like we've found a good amount of success like you know same thing going to IFMAs, we've had like in our gym a couple of gold medicine IFMAs, like we raced to the top of Australia pretty quickly and now we've got some really good pros and really like our, our experience like, you know, of Thailand, like Hugh's got more Thailand experience than the coaching staff here, like me and Rowan, but because we took it upon ourselves to like learn from different sources and like, you know, trial and error and just like, you know, doing a lot more of these kind of like drilling out and just figuring out like <clears throat> what we need to fix up in our games and like, you know, yeah. to make these guys better, like it, we just, uh, it just kind of molded itself over time from there. Took a while. Cause like, yeah, we did, this was like a kickboxing gym when, when I first started Muay Thai. It's like, man, they did Muay Thai. There's no Muay Thai here. <laughs> that one. But then, then from that, from learning from basically from scratch, from videos, from other people, yeah. like we've kind of like become one of the better gyms. On, the, on this side of Australia. Doing That's it. cool. Yeah. But, um, but like, yeah, um, like one resource as well, like I, I, that's kind of helped me with a lot of my coaching style, like, you know, Barry Robinson. I see like you and him have a lot of co- correspondence between each other. And like, I've, I've had a bit of correspondence with him too. And like, interesting dude. <laughs> I actually really, uh, I really enjoy, enjoy uh, talking to him because he's just pretty straight up with stuff. And, very much so, very yeah, much so, uh, right? But, like, yeah, like a lot of these tutorials, I've, I've gotten a lot out. Like, has that inspired you or, like, you know, given you things to work with? Absolutely. Um, just both from um, actually taking, you know, some of the drills, some of the, you know, verbatim done exactly, like, you know, how he's, you know, how he presents them. You know, there's been a, a good amount of that and also a good amount of just, like, you know, concepts ideas it's you know the the way he talks about you know how every other sport uh you know the foundation of their their training is is drilling yeah you know in basketball i mean yeah yeah, you know it's you're you're drilling certain elements uh then you know it's not just you go into practice and you play a game every day but somehow combat sports you know the 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 go-to seems to be you know, you just go in and spar or, or, or things of that nature. So that concept of, of how, you know, again, every other sport is drilling and drilling and drilling and drilling um, has definitely been something that, like, like I said, that, that changed, you know, changed the way I approach uh, coaching. Um, and again, yeah, it just some, and again, you know, some of the, the drills verbatim in some of his tutorials and instructional videos there's some of those things that we've taken and you know done them exactly like that other times it's just like okay influence of his ideas into how you know how i structure a class or how i structure people's uh training program so he's been uh 
you know, and, and again, for a guy that, you know, I've never met <laughs> in real life, yeah. you know, it's, it's been, it's, it, it's, it's caused me to like rethink, um, you know, just the approaches, just the approach I, I, you know, we take to, to train it. And it's been, you know, I, like Janet's last fight, uh, you know, a lot of the, the, I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied here. A lot of the training, a lot of the drilling leading up to that. I mean, it was, you know, I think taking his concepts and ideas uh, was very instrumental. I've told him that, uh, I, I, you know, I messaged him and let him know and, and such. Uh, but you know, really had a, a really big effect on um, how we approached the training for that last fight. So yeah, and that fight was man, it was awesome. It was a great fight that one. <laughs> that was a heart attack. I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, because I, it's like. Like things are going good and things are going, you know, okay, it's going good, but it's also things are just kind of okay. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, it was a close, uh, you know, it was a close fight. Uh, you know, it kind of really depends on um, what you see and what you like in that fight. And, uh, you know, so I knew right afterwards, uh, man, I, I actually told her. Like, you know, took out the mouthpiece, I'm like, listen, things that's really, really close. OK, so, you know, I, I didn't really have anything to say besides that other than yeah. like, oh, I was really close. So uh, th this, you know, prepare, you know, either prepare to be, you know, it's like it felt like in retrospect, I was like, prepare to be very happy or prepare to be kind of disappointed because, you know, if something's you guys know, I mean, if something's a blowout, it's like. Hey, you know, I got blown out. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. You know, it, sometimes that's a little easier to accept it when it's ah, when it's when it's razor thin and you know, and it's a split decision and it doesn't go your way. That's like oh, those are the heartbreakers, you know. Yeah. That's... Yeah. So just the fact that it it did tip in, in our favor was you know, <laughs> I was pretty joyful. It's pretty damn cool. Ah, oh, yeah, it was a really awesome fight. Yeah, yeah did, it was to see. did you have a chance to rewatch that fight, and did you have some thoughts afterwards? Um, yeah, uh, I, I've watched it a couple of times. Um, I haven't been able to like. Usually, we go in and, and uh, you know, with the athletes, um, with, with my fighters, like try to sit down afterwards and kind of deconstruct, uh, you know, together. But just because of. Uh, you know, everything that's been happening in the world. Otherwise, like we really haven't had a chance to do that, uh, uh, together to sit down and watch it together. And I don't know if she's watched it on her own. She's real funny about not wanting to watch things <laughs> like, you know, such a, yeah. you know, such a critic, you know, like a self, uh, you know, her own worst critic or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, but, uh, definitely watched it. And yeah, the, 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 you know, we, we, she was back the following Monday working on checking like kicks, <laughs> certain, you know, because she did cop a few of those. But you know, really proud of the fact that like the first fight, you know, she, you know, copped a, way too many right hands from uh, from Stamp. So uh, you know, the fact that this fight like kind of took away uh, took away her right hand a, a bit, um, well, a lot actually. Yeah. Um, you know, there, there weren't that many that she got hit with clean. So that was. You know, very happy about that happening. Um, but you know, back to the drawing board on uh, leg kick defense. So, but such is life. Hey, that's it. You can always like, you know, like same thing. My guys here after fights, I I try and get the video and just go. All right, you watch it. Go give me give me three to, like you know three things that you do good, three things that you did bad. And they'll watch it together, and then we'll just nut out from there. What, like, what, what, what I think I saw, and then what you think you saw, and we'll try and join those ideas together, and like, you know, and yeah. go from there. Yeah, that's 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 awesome. That's a good. I think that crucial. So you know, it, it, like I said, that's almost like going back to Barry. You know, with uh, you know, film study. It's like you know, in American football or whatever. It's like games on Sunday, Monday. They're back in there. You know, studying. Uh, you know, studying the plays and, you know, who didn't go where and who didn't do what, you know, win or lose. Everybody's, you know, being diligent about, you know, about their due diligence and, and you know, in the performance and, mm -hmm. you know, more crucial things that are, you know, I think just absolutely necessary now. Oh, yeah, definitely. And it's, 
I just I always want to like say to these guys as well, like 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 you said with Janet from there, like sometimes you're just your own worst critic, but like you got to be able to kind of look at it more neutral and like and see like you know this we did it good, like we practice this, be happy with that as well. Yeah. Of course, there's always millions of things that you can go. I could do this better. I can do this better. But also, all this. yeah, yeah, all of them. But I was like, you know, also just look and go. There is good stuff in there. Unless you got knocked the fuck out, there's there's good stuff in there. <laughs> it's like you know, and like you know, and be proud of it a bit. And it's like you know, just know that you know the stuff that we did train that it works, and you know, we can continue on from there. Also, yeah, absolutely, mm-hmm. right. absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, any more stuff? No, no we we'll just get a, uh, like, because I know, uh, like, we were talking a little bit before about kind of like how I like to get people watching the golden era stuff mm. and stuff like that. So I wanted to get just a little bit of stuff that might inspire some of the people who are listening to fire up the YouTube machine. Um, uh, so is there, like, just a, a handful of fighters that uh, you think influenced you? Well, I guess, like, influenced you while you were fighting, influenced you stylistically, but also that you just like to watch to influence your sort of uh, coaching principles. Like, who are sort of the, the major fighters? Oh, absolutely. Um, From your video tape. Probably number, number one biggest, uh, you know, for, from the get-go was uh, was Jong I thought you were uh, He, mainly because, like, the you know, first camp I ever trained at was, uh, you know, was Fairtex way back in like 90, 95. So Jong Sinan was still kind of in his prime then. He was like the big guy around the camp. Um, I got to see him fight at Lumpini. Um, and then just being around like, you know, a guy like that training was something that was really big. But for me, like, like Jong Sinan um, was huge because I'm trying to say something, you know, I want to be like, I know the guy and like, you know, and text him and, and, and stuff. It's like his style is, I think, something that, you know, aside from like just the toughness back there, you know, because he just, you know, just kind of going there and, and yeah. that's how he got the name, you know, Wooden Man and kicking him, you know, <laughs> taking all this damage, just like, you know, uh, kicking a teak tree, they said, or whatever. I mean, may, maybe that part of the style wasn't the, the best thing to emulate, but from a West, like to me, from a Western mindset at that time, he punched, you know, and yeah. he kicked. And obviously, his, you know, his clinch and everything was, you know, ridiculously good. But the fact that he had, like, this element of, uh, you know, sort of punch and kick type style yeah. at, a, you know, at a certain point in his career, I think was easy to, a little easier to see and, like, conceptualize and think, like, okay, I can do something, you know, not, not say I could do, like, that good, but, you know, I could do something like that. Some what he, a lot of what he was doing would make a certain amount of sense. You know, if, if that makes sense. Yeah. So Jong Sinan would be a big one. Where, like, someone like um, Karuhat, yeah. you guys, mm-hmm. Karuhat, like, you know, he San, he's like Sanchai before Sanchai was Sanchai, Absolutely, right? Yeah. So just, you know, just an absolute sort of wizard with crazy, you know, timing and, and you know, su- such a style that was kind of unusual. Like, something like that I couldn't emulate. I couldn't figure out how to emulate. It was, like, too high level. If that makes any sense, yeah, you know. Absolutely. So some, some, someone like Jong Sinan is like, okay, I can kind of see this and have some understanding of what's going on. So someone like him, he was he was really big uh, in the beginning. Um, Seng Tin Noi also you. part of that is you know because I, I uh, trained at his gym and then we also hosted him over here. Um, you know, so we we bring him over a few years in a row and he'd stay here for a month or two months. So I'd have like you know full access to. <laughs> you know, to someone like that, to, to you know, to sing the annoy. So, um, the thing I found most interesting about like sing the annoy was the way he fought, and then the way he coached his people, um, or his I, his ideas of fighting weren't the same. Yeah. The way he explained it to me was, it's like I had to fight this way, and actually, Johnson kind of said the same thing. I think in um, you know interview I read with him, it's like. I fought like this because this is how I was ordered to fight. Yeah. But, you know, my ideas on it are, are you know, are, are different. And you can actually kind of see it in, like, Jong Sinan's latter day stuff. I know I'm going back a little bit. Like, in Jong Sinan's fights after he left Thailand, um, after he was fighting here in the States, stylistically kind of opened yeah. up a little bit and, and, you know, added elements that you 
you know, for lack of a better word, probably couldn't couldn't do it Lumpini Stadium and have as much success. Yeah. But because the you know, like the judging or scoring criteria in the states or you know, international, I guess you'd just say that were different enough that it allowed him a certain amount of um, like a certain amount of freedom, if you will. Yeah. But with, with Sanctian, it was the same thing. He he would tell me he's like, no, 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 I didn't want to fight in this certain way, but. I had to because you know the boss of the camp says you know this you do this you do this you do this. Uh, I remember one conversation he was like he was you know talking about all the stitches in his scalp, you know from <laughs> having to just like come there and, and have this very forward and you know you know that you know my old he was talking about you know everything was just here and I had to block like this. He's like, but now you know with the elbows I have my guys you know working a lot more things from you know, from a longer guard, from deflecting things out here instead of just absorbing everything. He's like, oh, man, so many times had to get stitches in my scalp and, you know, because they'd have to shave your head, you know, shave little spots to do the stitches up and and such. But uh, the Sanctian was another big, uh, big influence. Um, Chanded, who I'm, like, on this kick lately, uh, uh, just the way he uses, like, his his lead leg, his left kick, you know, for orthodox guys, like so many different little cool little, just the way he shifts his body and, and allows him to score. He shifts his body, allows him to, you know, touch the other guy's glove to knee or to kick or whatever. He's another person that like, um, really like watching. And yeah. Jesus, this could go on forever. <laughs> but I would say, I mean, even still, I mean, from, you know, from 25, 25 years out, uh, Jong San, still uh, a lot, you know, Sanctin, Sanctin Noi, definitely, um, and, and Chan Dez, those are probably like the kind of top three for me right now. And ironically, interestingly enough, you know, they're all like all in the same promotion, all fought each other yeah. several times or, or whatnot. So, anyway, I don't know. Are those you watching, guys. Are you it, watching a lot more footage it's, now? It's, you're, it's, now you're in I'm self so Sorry, mate. Uh, now you're in self isolation. Are you watching a lot more footage? Are you are you getting overloaded with it? Or yeah, I'm. I'm man, I'm like. Uh, <laughs> since there's not much else to do, it's like I'm going into the garage and digging out like you know boxes of uh, or trying to dig out boxes of videotapes and stuff like that. Trying to find all these old things. I just uh, had to buy a new. Uh, I just went out today and. Like I couldn't leave the car. The, the shop was open, but went to you have Best Buy in Australia. Uh, I know what it is. We're familiar okay, with it. Yeah, so yeah, the electronic store or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I ordered some like a DVD drive because you know I guess computers nowadays no longer have like those installed. I had to get an yeah, external DVD yeah. drive and some software to like convert VHS into uh, into digital formats. So you'll probably see. Uh, you know, I'm going to start uploading more stuff in the next couple of... God, I hope it's not a few more weeks, but... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. With the with the pandemic in place, what sort of um, self-isolation training programs have you got going for yourself and your athletes? You know what? Um, I'm behind the... Yeah, I'm, I'm covering my face because I'm, like, behind <laughs> the curve on that for certain. Yeah. Um, uh, a few of the people are getting together. And, uh, you know, t- I'm giving, I guess, instruction from afar, if you will. Um, you know, a few of them are getting together and doing things, and I'm trying to keep an eye on that as much as possible. As far as, like, online content and, and streaming classes and such, it's like, <sighs> yeah, I dropped the ball. I'm getting on top of that. I, I really need to. Um, but part of me is, like, I'm trying to figure it out, like, okay, do I do tutorial videos that are, you know, that you can access at any time? Do I run, you know, do I run, like, a class at, at certain times of the day? You know, I'm trying to figure out what what people want the most. And then in terms of, like, okay, if I do it as a class, it's like, you know, what exactly can I do? Yeah. I'm trying to you know, write all these things out and... and and figure it out. It's like, you know, the the course. It, it seems that everybody's sort of doing just like almost like a, a shadow boxing and, and body weight and calisthenics type 
thing because you, know, you know i go into the gym and film stuff like on the oh here's the bag well you know what if you don't have a head most people don't have a heavy bag at home that's why they come to the gym yeah so how am i going to do that and then the other side of that is like Oh, I feel almost guilty going to the gym and doing it because everybody else is stuck at home and you know who's who's the prick hanging out in the you know the big gym like oh look at this I can do whatever you know so yeah, yeah I, I long story short I dropped the ball on on you know I'm definitely not first to the party on that mm-hmm. trying to figure out what I what I need to do yeah so well you like suggestions. Know- yeah, <laughs> well, like it, I, like at the moment here, like we're just doing a little bit of tutorials and that, but like, like most of the stuff I do here, like the process, this is selfish reasons because I want to talk to people I want to talk to, and that, and like yeah. you know, like same thing for you, like you know, what would be really cool is like you know, you get some of those golden era fights, you commentate a little bit over the top of it, and see what you <laughs> see, what, like you know, what you're seeing, and like you know, like or you do those little clips of like you know, like Johnson on. And just go like this is some of the stuff that he does, and this and, you know this is how I work it into my stuff. Yeah. That'd be cool. I, I could I could do something like that. Mm. It's uh, you know part of me is like yeah I, I, I could all right I can get behind that, but also part of me is like uh, like you guys ever watch a fight like maybe, whatever it might be maybe you watched it at towards the beginning of your martial arts you know mm. your journey if you will, and then you watch it again now. And you see things completely differently. Yeah, yeah. It's, I'm afraid I'm going to put something up, and then like in two years, I'm going to look at it. I'm like, you f- numbskull. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You can always do an update. You know, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah you can the magic delete button or, or, or what have you. You know, yeah. But that might be a good idea. That's like, I, yeah, yeah, I definitely, I'd watch it. You know, it'd like be pretty cool actually. All right, I can, I can, I can. You know, I've got nothing else to do. I'm up to like 3 a.m. every morning. Uh, Doing nothing, so might as well be semi productive. Because you know? I can see that doing something like that, like for our guys, like just to put up, like, like kind of like, like we're talking about, like get that little bit of accessibility, like maybe they'll watch the fights if they have some commentary over it. But obviously, like, I'll fire up a fight and think about what I might say, and I'll be like, I'm just not like, like when you're watching something, like, you know, like I watch a lot of like, uh, yeah, Carrot Hart's one of my favorites. Like, I'll go yeah. watch it and be like, I'm not qualified to speak about this. <laughs> like, that's like my take. <laughs> Yeah, yeah that, that's uh, you know watch it. Yeah, someone like Karuha, like it's the same. It's like watching someone like that. It's like yeah, I can't, I can't speak to this. This is, this is too ninja for me, man. It's, it's too much. <laughs> I'm not even a hundred percent convinced. I understand what's going on. I'm just doing my best. <laughs> oh, so yeah, right. yeah. This, you know, this is what I see. I could be wrong here. That, that would you know, definitely do it. And then part of me too. It's like. Uh, well, like, for, for example, just, just the fact that, okay, I'm here I am talking with, you know, you guys in Australia. And again, I've, I've always, like, coming up, it was like, you know, I always felt like the states, like the level of things weren't, you know, like it was there. It's like I used to, you know, I'd subscribe to International Kickboxer yeah. oh, magazine. Yeah. It's like, okay, yeah. what's going on with uh, with, with Darren Reese and, and yeah. you know, the preacher yeah. and, and Scott Bannon and, you know, and, and obviously, you know, Wayne and, uh, you know, from the kickboxing end of it, like, uh, God, who are some of the guys like uh, Oz, uh, Turkan, well, oh, Ozkan and Oz Turkan, Oz Khan. Yeah, yeah, yeah and uh, Mir <laughs> Safipur or something like that, you know. Tariq Solak shows, where, where, yeah. you know, so it's like, you're going back. <laughs> it's like, yeah, yeah that's going back. Good, yeah, yeah. But that, yeah. that, that was kind of like, you know, that, that time was kind of the time when I was, I think, into things the, the most. Mm. Um, but the fact that, you know, like I always looked up to the, you know, to the Aussie scene, it's like, okay, this is something to, you know, level wise, you know, it's oh, it's like, like we talked, like you talked about earlier, oh, you know, you got France and Australia and England and all yeah. these other countries that, you know, just the fact that I'm here, uh, you know, as an American talking to, you know, on an Australian podcast is, you know, kind of humbling. I, I appreciate it. Like I said, with just the history that, you know, these arts and sports have had in, 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 in Australia, it's like, these guys want to talk to me? Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> you know? No, no, you definitely earned it, mate. It's yeah. like, yeah, we, we've been following your stuff for a while and that's, and we've been wanting to talk for you for a while as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Big fans of Thank the way you do things you. over there. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Awesome. All right, so we're coming up about an hour here anyway from that one. So, like, we might call it the end there. But, like, look, Brian, like I said, it's been awesome talking to you, man. Like, and definitely have to do it again sometime. 
you know, <laughs> it'd be fun. <laughs> but um, but other than that, um, you want to tell our uh, listeners and that like uh, where they can find you Instagram wise and your gym. Follow your stuff. Yeah, um, Instagram. Let's see. It's uh, the gym is Boxing Works. Uh, my personal one is Brian B R Y A N Pope Joy P O P E J O Y. Uh, YouTube. Uh, that, that, uh, I think it's just boxing works on YouTube, but, um, it's kind of a mix of, uh, like you said, uh, you know, old golden era fights and, uh, and occasionally some little peeks into the gym, um, and such, but, uh, yeah, if, you know, I'm trying to upload, like I said, upload more content, um, just to keep the, uh, keep the bygone eras of, mm-hmm. of stuff out there for people to, you know, be able to see and hopefully, uh, you know, learn to love and appreciate and, and grow from it. Cause I think there's a, you know, a, a lot of, uh, a lot of good stuff out there we can learn from. Oh, definitely. Good. Excellent. Okay. Well, we'll just like, we'll leave it there, mate. Thank you very much. Uh, I, good. so much. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you taking the time and mm-hmm. thank you. Thank that's you. it. That's it. Hopefully don't go too crazy during quarantine here, mate. <laughs> that's that's trying out to you guys as well stay safe thanks brian yeah thank you very much all right see you later brother. See ya. <laughs> all right Ooh, awesome Ooh. yeah it was a good one from there so yeah that does it today for us as well so um that was a pretty good one maybe people still want to see us here let's uh, let's have a look see <laughs> we're still here can you see that that one or all my other little videos look at the Look at me, I'm so narcissistic. I like to take videos of myself. <laughs> All right, so um, so yeah, they'll call it there. So remember to uh, follow us on Instagram and Facebook at um, Enter the Double Dragon uh, <clears throat> podcast. Oh, a bit of rain happening here. Rain. Hopefully, it's not too noisy. Okay, and you can catch us on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and hopefully now YouTube. Okay, <laughs> so, so like we'll try and do a little bit more video content as well. Okay. Especially like lockdown is imminent. (laughs) (laughs) All right, guys. So we'll catch you later. See you.